Hello, I'm Apostle Ricky Floyd, overseer of the Pursuit of God Transformation Center right here in Memphis, Tennessee. Listen, I'm so excited that you tuned into our telecast today. We believe that we have a relevant word that's going to cause transformation, prosperity, peace, and wisdom to enter into your life. So listen, stay tuned and prepare yourself to be transformed. The Pursuit of God Announcements. Announcements. If you are a member of the POG and not yet volunteering in any ministry, we need you. Please stop at the plugged in table on your way out. Put your hands, gifts, talent and time to work and get plugged in today. Pay your tithes and offering at the pursuit of We are also accepting online giving in the foyer next to the bookstore. So if you forgot to stop at the ATM or you have no cash, don't worry. Stop at the station next to the bookstore and give accordingly. Upcoming events. Don't miss out. Teens, it's that time again for Truth Seekers, the one hour Bible study where you can earn money. That's right, I said cash money. Wednesday starting in September at 7 p.m. for 6th through the 12th grade students. Parent orientation and enrollment will be Wednesday, September 10th at 7 p.m. And the first student session will start Wednesday, September 17th at 7 p.m. Don't miss it. Perfection Women's Ministry presents Femininity, Saturday, September 20th, 2014 at 5 p.m. Ladies, this is your night to have fun, get refreshed, and be free. You'll enjoy being fed on every level. Mark your calendars now. This is a meeting you really don't want to miss. Teens, enter the zone. Excited praise, worship, games, and a high-powered revelatory word for your generation. The Excited Youth Zone, Sundays at 11 a.m. at the Pursuit of God Transformation Center. Please visit thepursuitofgod.org for updated information and like and follow us on Facebook. We are using social media in a big way, so stay connected. And on behalf of Apostle Ricky and Sheila Floyd, we say thank you. We are building up a people of purpose, passion, power, praise, and prosperity for the kingdom's advancement. Hi, I'm Elder Ruby Tate and I'm part of the evangelism team. The evangelism team at Pursuit of God is in need of you. We actually go out into the community. All of us have experienced some type of challenges in our lives, whether it was a loved one that had to be sent to a nursing home or whether it was uh, someone that was incarcerated. We've all experienced some of these things. Well, the Pursuit of God Transformation Center evangelism team goes out into the community, in the prisons, in the nursing homes, uh, on the streets, and we're evangelizing the lost. And we need you to take part in that. You know, everyone can't do everything, but everybody together can do something. So you're needed. I see the evangelism team being a mighty army taking back this community of Frazier, going into the city of Memphis and the surrounding areas, as well as this region. I see us coming, taking it by force. I really appreciate the, the teamwork that we have. I'm so appreciative of those that have coming in and taken on leadership positions, and I'm just excited about being able to pass the baton to those that are coming up. The School of Service uh, ministers are a part of it, and I'm just excited about how God is bringing up the leaders in the church. And so they're just going by force. I tell you, I'm excited about it. Couldn't do this without them. This, this week and next week, we're gonna be setting up a booth outside and you can stop by the booth, look at the areas of evangelism, whether it be prison in the Criminal Justice Center, whether it's at Jail East, whether it's at Mid-South Health and Rehabilitation Center, whether it's working with the homeless, whatever it is, you can come to the booth outside and we'll get you connected, we'll get you plugged in. How about that? Looking forward to seeing you. Spirituality adds, religion takes away. Religion tell you what you can't do. Spirituality tells you and shows you what you can do. Anybody ready to be spiritual? It says that, listen, we have allowed the tradition of man to make the word of God void and of non effect. So you got people in the church, but tradition has nothing working for them. Watch this. <laughs> you are not broke. Whoo -wee. 
Ooh. I got to go back to that scripture, Mark 7, and I want to go to verse 14. And when he called all the people unto them, he said unto them, hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. The word hearken means to hear, to listen, and to obey. To, to hear, to listen, and to obey. Or to listen, to hear, and to obey. I know some of you are saying, what's the difference between listening and hearing? L listening means it came to you. Hearing means it came in you. So you can listen to somebody and the word can go straight through your ear. But when I hear you, look at the first word, H-E-A-R-T. When you hear it, it goes to your heart. Faith comes by because when you hear it, it goes to your heart. Now when it goes in your heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth, speak it. Listen, you're going to do it when it hits your heart. So it says, hearken, hearken unto me, every one of you, and, and understand. Don't just listen, don't just hear, obey, but I need you to understand. In other words, I need you to stand under. See, I'm going to give you some revelation that I need you to stand under. Why? Because you've been standing on the wrong thing, but I want you to stand under righteousness. You've been standing on your flesh, but I want you to begin to stand under spirituality. I'm going to tell you something tonight. You're not broke because of what race you are. Yeah, that's what the media won't tell you. You know, uh, I'm just black. I'm just struggling. You know, I'm just, you know, I'm just a squirrel trying to get a nut. You know, I can't bust a grape in a fruit pie trying to get over. You know, can every time brother try to get up, trying to make a dollar out of 15 cents. You know, you know, no, no, you're not broke because you're black. Because listen what this says. This says there is nothing from without a man that entered in him that can defile him. So what out there ain't stopping you? You're not, you're not broke because you're a Democrat. No, your, po your politics have not made you broke. Why? Because that's out there. Because there's some billionaire Democrats. There's some billionaire black folks. <laughs> Y'all ready for this? You're not heartbroken because, you, uh, because your undercover lover did you wrong. No, 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 that's not why you're heartbroken. You're heartbroken because you only choose lovers that you're trying to keep undercover and you keep getting undercover. <laughs> then you discover that they weren't your lover at all. And there's a pattern that causes you to keep finding them. There's something in you that keeps causing you to find yourself in racist situations. There's something in you that causes you to keep getting fired off of them jobs. There's something in you that causes them brothers and them sisters to keep disconnected. There's something in you that causes the police to pull you over every time. Why? Because there's something in you. So I come tonight to get the right thing in you. Because if I can get the right thing in you, you'll draw the right thing to you. He said, but the things which come out of you, those are the things that defile a man. And if any man has an ear to hear, let him hear. Look at your neighbor and say, you better listen. You better hear. And you better obey. Amen. Listen, tell your other neighbor, because you might be standing in, you might be sitting next to your next billionaire partner. And if they stay broke, they won't be able to fulfill their part of the business transaction. Tell them you better listen. You better hear. And you better obey. Because when I come up with my 500 mil, I don't want no excuses from you. Y'all didn't tell them. Y'all tell them. When I come up with my 500 million, I don't want no excuse. I don't want no eba to diva abba see what had happened. Well, no, I'm going to say, get away from me, you twisted and wicked servant. Him. You better get yourself together Cause we got somewhere to go And I'm praying when I get there You got your money 
That's what I'm praying. I'm praying you got your money. Whoo! Listen, listen. <laughs> I, I just saw any of any of y'all remember saying, now, I know, come on now, we're gonna be honest. Anybody, okay, I know you're gonna be honest. So anybody remember y'all hearing somebody say, I got five on it? Anybody remember that? I know you then. I know, I know, I know I want you. I know it's you, but you heard your cousin, baby mama say, I got five on it. What if God elevates us to the point that I said, I got five million on it? You got five on it? He got five million on it. You got five on it, Jerome. That's 15 million right there. Come here, everybody say, I got five on it. <laughs> I got five on it million that is and the Lord told me that 17 millionaires are coming out of this room you look you feel you smell like money three of you in the next three years well, should I say two other y'all? Two other y'all. So, first tonight we're dealing with, tonight we're going to be dealing with the what and the why. Now, I've come in the name and the nature of Jesus that you might have, that you might have, that you might, that you might, that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Tonight, these teachings will expose, misuse, and misunderstood principles that have been demonically designed to kill your hope and your faith and to destroy your love. How many know demons have entered the church? There's a demon of poverty in the church. But we come to kill it dead. I've come to expand your imagination. Just take your head and just stretch your brain out there. I come to expand your imagination and to increase your expectations. If that happens, then it will cause instant transformation and miracles manifestation will be inevitable. If you work with me tonight, ain't no way you're going to be the same. Ain't no way you're going to stay the same. Lean to your neighbor and say, I just hear change all over your body right now. I hear it. Genesis 11 and 6 says, And the Lord said, Behold, the people are one. And they have one language and they've begun to do and nothing, <laughs> nothing will be restrained from them which they've imagined. I said I come to expand your imagination. Are you going to work with me? I said I've come to expand your imagination. You gonna walk with me? Yeah. Walk with me. Won't you walk with me? If you walk with me, you'll be able to run later. And then you'll be able to fly later. And then you'll be able to transport. See, transportation means you was here one day and then you was there the next. Anybody? I didn't say transformation. I said transportation. We finna make Star Trek real up in this church. They were saying, "Wait a minute! I thought you was over here." No, I was. Yeah, my emotions were over there. Yeah, my credit score was over there. My relationship was over there yeah my health was a, well what happened i transported into a new dimension space and time nano new, new. <laughs> now watch this watch this he said nothing will be held from them which they imagine why because they had one language 
They weren't just imagining, but they had one language. Now watch. These people were building a tower to heaven. Now wait a minute. Ain't no machines. Ain't no computers. Ain't no internet. Ain't no Google. You can't Google what, the, what, what kind of uh, program you need to put together. But because these people had one language and one imagination, they were able to produce supernatural. So when I tell you to say something, now I see some of y'all looking at me all saw a puss face, looking like Boss Ugly Bob sucking on a lemon. But when I tell you to say something, now, it's important that you say it because one language will produce one imagination. One language and one imagination will cause us to produce the supernatural. Somebody say, yeah! yeah. All right, all right, I like that. Now watch this. He said they were one language. Nothing could be restrained. That means nothing can stop them. They had imagined anything that they imagined to do, it would be done. And the only way that God could stop them, he said, let us go down and let us confound. That word confound means let us confuse their language. Why? That they may not understand. See, that's why people's marriage break up when you don't understand. I just don't understand you no more. See, that means your relation, your communication has been confounded, it's been confused. And any relationship where the communication is confused, it won't last. Now watch this now. He said the same thing that produced the level of agreement to attract supernatural activity that was conceived in imagination so when I ask you to say something, say it. Amen. Why? Because it's going to produce supernatural. I realize that our voices will release vibrations that will invent <laughs> new levels of victory. Somebody said new levels of victory. Now there's some victories in your life that you're familiar with. See, some of y'all got familiarity with scratch-off victories. Amen. You can say amen. Come on, we found the tickets on your floorboard when we rolled with you the other day. But the Lord wants to invent some new ways of blessing you. In other words, he want to bless you some ways that he ain't never done before. And the only way that he could, that he could, that they could be deceived out of what was conceived was to confound and confuse their conversation. So tonight, we will use the perfect blend of inspiration. So you go to some conferences, they give you inspiration. Some give you information. Some have you to sit in a room and do meditation. And some have you do imagination. But we're going to make a delicious gumbo. We're gonna, I'm going to inform you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to inspire you. I'm gonna, we're going to meditate tonight. We're going to imagine. We're going to use affirmation. And listen, and, and, and it's going to increase our expectation. And y'all know my saying. Whatever you expect is the check. You collect. Anybody going to give yourself a raise tonight? Tell your neighbor, whatever you expect is the check you collect. I don't believe it. That, that's, that's cool. But, well, don't tell them, don't touch me. Because <laughs> that, that, that might be contagious. Tell them if you sneeze, sneeze that way. Because I don't want to get infected with the disease of disbelief tonight. Hallelujah. Now, now, there are two major components that cause your faith to produce. Somebody say hope, hope. And, love. and love. Now, I believe he's able is not good enough. That's what some of you, I believe he's able. You know, God can do anything. You know, so that's not good enough. It's not good enough just the fact that you believe he's able. It's not good enough for that, just for you to believe that he has. 
You know, because there's some people believe that he has gone to heaven for them, but they still ain't accepted him as the Lord and say, I believe he died for me. Well, will you confess? No, I won't do that shit. So it's not good enough to believe that he's able. It's not good enough to believe that he has. I must get to the point that I believe and I receive what he has already done. Let me tell you a secret. What you need God to do, he's already done. Wow. Say that seven times. What I need him to do. No, no, no. You got to say God. What I need God to do. He's already done it. Say it seven times and convince yourself. He's already. What I need. Say it different every time. What I need God to do. He's already done it. What I need God to do. He's already done it. What I need God to do, he's already done it. Now take you 10 seconds and thank God for what he's already done. Just 10 seconds now. Thank you. Thank you, God. I must get to the point. That I believe I receive what he's already done. I believe I receive what he's already done. <laughs> the other day, I prayed a prayer. And I asked the Lord to manifest $600,000 that day. And I believed that he would do it. But I wasn't specific enough. <laughs> I'm on a board that's responsible that has, uh, they have $149 million sitting up in the bank. Somebody said that's a good board <laughs> to be on. And I said, Lord, I want 600,000 to manifest, listen to what I said, for the ministry. I got an email <laughs> from the board that I'm on. And they said, congratulations, board. We won our lawsuit and we got 689 million. Now, now don't, don't clap because I wasn't clapping. Because I said an incomplete prayer. What y'all clapping for? They got 149 million. Ricky D. Floyd in the pursuit of God. That, that, that 600,000 could have changed everything. So I not only got what I asked for, I got exceedingly about $89,000 more than I asked for, but I didn't specifically say. I'm talking about the same. Yeah, that ain't no accident. The same day I pray, Less than 10 hours later, $689,000 show up that they've been trying to have access to for two and a half years. I didn't get mad. I said, I'll know the next time. I started to go tell them, that's my money. I, that's my money. They, they, listen, they, they sent that to y'all, but it should have had Ricky D. Floyd and P.O.G. on that. They're going to go on transfer that money over to me. I'm still thinking about it. Y'all laughing. I'm still thinking about it. What's the, what's the, what can they do? They can say yes. It's a 50% chance. They only got two options. Yes. Uh, no. I, I know I'm going to be Monday morning. Most Christians live a life of lower level expectation. We've been trained. Don't bother God. You ought to be satisfied with what you got. 
don't appreciate nothing. Yeah, I appreciate what I got, but it's something better. And the Lord told me to tell you to take 10 seconds to appreciate what's in your future. Appreciate what's in your future. I'm talking about the manifestation of your prayers. Appreciate what's in your future. See, it's not, listen, you may not have nothing in your wallet. What's in your wallet? Nothing but what's in your future. Oh, I said something right there. See, some of you won't say nothing because you're looking at what's in your wallet. But I said, what's in your future? Because what's in your future going to come back and change what's in your wallet. See, when I ask you a year from now what's in your wallet, your answer won't be the same as it is today. <laughs> Glory to God. Somebody shout glory to God. Most Christians are living a lower level life of expectation. We perceive the people who are believing, the people who really are believing and receiving and achieving, they must be doing something wrong. Getting all that money from them poor folks. What an oxymoron. How can you get all that money from poor folk? That, I mean, <laughs> poor, they, they classified poor because they don't have no money. All that money. That little old lady living in the project. Oh, what money? <laughs> little old lady ain't got no money. A little old lady hitting the church up for benevolence. And if we tell y'all that she hit it up for benevolence, see, that's what the church, they always talking about what they doing for people, putting for business all out in the street. So if we don't, if we don't say we're doing nothing, we ain't doing nothing. If we tell we did something, putting for business all in the street. Side note, tell somebody side note. Side note. When you come ask the church for some money, you put us in your business. We won't know who you're sleeping with. Yeah, we won't know. We won't know why you're broke. We won't know what you're going to do next month so you ain't broke again and ain't going to hit us up again. So the moment you say, why y'all need to know, just walk out the door. Because we won't know why you need some money from us. And there you have it. You've just experienced what takes place regularly at the Transformation Center. Listen, we just want to invite you to come on in and have a real encounter. Go to our website at thepursuitofgod.org or call us at 901-353-5772 so that we can give you more information about what we're doing and keep you abreast to all of the services and the events that we have. We trust that God met you at the point of your expectation and we just encourage you, come and fellowship with us at the Transformation Center.